Hello again, Torden here, and this is Advanced Voxelmancy 204, the Voxel Nose. As promised, today we're going to build a simple nose cone for a ship. But beforehand, today's frequently asked question is, Hey Torden, did you know that your videos are being mirrored on Infinity Corporation's website? To the answer, which the answer is yes. I'm actually a legate of Infinity Corporation and they are mirroring my videos by permission. So you may watch them here on YouTube slash C slash Torton or you may go as well to Infinity Corporation's website or YouTube channel and there is not only my videos but lots and lots of really great videos that are being put together by our members and I encourage you to check them out. So First, we're going to copy uh, the slope we made in the last video, and we're just going to copy this part right here. We're going to go from our um, from the bottom of our prime voxel to the top of our prime voxel. Um, you can, of course, get far more elaborate, but the goal here is to teach the principles, not to necessarily show you exactly how to make, you know, my ship. Um, etc. I don't want you to build exactly what I'm building. I want you to experiment and build stuff that makes you happy and um, inspires you. That's kind of the point here. All right. But what we're going to do is go ahead and run this up nice and high. One, let's see the other direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, so that we can get underneath it um, because it'll help us cut and paste later. So generally get used to working in the air. You want to be able to get down below stuff so that you can, you know, put your selection box in the correct place. All right. So I like to work with points and flats because they grow up to meet the existing construct much more cleanly than if you're working with blocks. If I have a block um, and I want to place the next piece right next to it like this, well, I have to contend with these corners over here. And if I want to take these corners and move them down to here, uh, which is what I want to do. It helps if they started there in the first place. So I'm going to go over here and grab this flat, which is the flat that is at the bottom of the prime voxel that we made in the last video. I'm going to go over here and I will eventually place one here, but I'm going to start by going over one. So I'm going to place it here. And you'll see that what happens is it's a nice flat uh, edge, clean edge along this edge right here and then it grows up to meet our existing uh, slope and I'm gonna go ahead and run a couple of these over this way like this and the problem comes when we hit right here because we're switching planes as we talked about in the last video and this black piece is the next plane up all right if I grab a voxel and change its color let's pick a nice annoying red and I place it right here. So I want to move this corner right here and this corner right here down like the other ones over here and here, but I can't do that because as we already know, our vertices can only move one and a half voxels from its original location. So if I try to move this corner right here down to here, I only get halfway. I move one vert voxel and a half and I'm only to this halfway point which is going to break up our nice clean line. So the question is how do we solve that problem? Well our yellow cube right here is uh, showing that the one corner right here is at our prime corner and then we have our other corner is one eighth of a voxel below prime. So let's go ahead and build that line right there from there to there and place that and see what happens. So I'm going to go over here to our corner and I'm going to grab this. Um, now this is the corner on the top. We want it on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and invert this along uh, that axis. So that puts it down at the bottom. And then we also need to invert it on this axis here so that it's going to be our leading edge right along that side. So now if I go ahead and I manipulate this reactor down just so that you can see it. Um, if the vo voxel is right there, we're in the correct place. So that's our correct corner there. And then we go ahead and we grab the next one. So we again, we want one uh, eighth of a voxel further away. 
um, and in this case that's up but again we're going to just invert it so that we're dealing with the down and flip it on the y-axis so that we're in the right place here and place that one now we're going to combine these two reactors so we're going to grab this edge here go up and over and grab this one and go up uh, we're in the wrong we've got a wrong reactor here let's go do that again we want this one which is the one I thought we got oh I know why we did it so I need to rotate it this way but this time we're the leading edge here so we also need to flip it on this axis and this axis. That's what I forgot. That gives us our line like we want it. So we're going to grab this. A simple mistake happens to the best of us. So there's our line. Alright. So we're going to go ahead and copy that line out. And then let's pick a nice obnoxious color, like red. Actually, let's go for blue. And we're going to place that line right there. And you see what happens is that that line, that voxel, which is in fact there, right? And we drew a line, we, we created a voxel that was in this space of this yellow cube, but that is a line from here to here. And the rest of the vertices moved to mesh with the existing construct. So now we've managed to go the entire length of our voxel on the slope up to our next top voxel. And I left this one empty because I'd like to kind of move to a point a little bit. So if I took this flat here as I had before and placed it here, that would be all right, but it kind of gives us a little squarish look to it. So let's instead just use the point that's here, um, which is our prime point. So I'm going to this time be kind of invisible about it. I'm going to copy the point out. Now it is in the upper right corner, right? But we want it to be in the lower right corner. So for that, it's this wall here. We'll invert it. Um, let's make it blue again. Let's go over and place it like that. So you see how that filled in nicely with both those points over here um, rather than have it square out the front here. Okay, so that's great. Now we can go ahead and copy here to here. Maybe make it just a little bit wider. And now we can copy this piece. Go all the way to the back over here. We'll just copy this entire piece. We also need to get the spot that's above it because that's where the black one actually is, if you recall correctly. So we're going to copy that. And we're going to invert it on this axis by using the... Sorry. By using this wall right here. And there we have the nose cone of a ship. All right. If we don't want the flat edge here, we can do the whole thing with a point across this, this side right here. So if we back up a step, right? Now what we could do is Go ahead and put this here, right? That would work. And then instead of doing what we did, we could actually use the same piece.
place one here. Right, that gives us that. Now if we want to have that point between, same principle, grab our corner. Again, we just need to invert it on the z-axis, which is that wall over there. Let's change its color so we can see what it's doing. And it's done that, which is perfect. Gives us a nice little slope out the front like that. Grab this, and remember the black one is actually above it. Grab that. Put that one more time. This time we're going to grab all the way to the edge. Invert it on this wall facing. Um, that was a little too wide, so let's go in to there. And there is the nose cone of our ship. 